Hello, everybody. It's Kathleen with Tree Sisters. I'm the Artist Liaison and Community Engagement Coordinator. And this is Creative Interviews. And today we're with Milan Totero. And guess what? He's the very first Tree Brother that I've ever interviewed. I'm not sure if any of the other Tree Sisters have done that, but I would say we're probably making a first here. And I'm really, really happy to bring you uh, Milan's work. He's a photographer and he's going to be uh, become one of our artist liaisons. We'll be using some of his work and sharing it with you to inspire you uh, to plant more forests around the planet. So um, I just say hello first to Milan. Hello. Hi, Kathleen. I'm Hi. honored that I'm the first free brother. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, very nice to see, to see you again and talk to you. Yes, it's really wonderful. We've had a lot of really inspiring conversations, so I'm really excited to to share you and your energy with everybody. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is read a little bit of um, Milan, about Milan. And Milan lives in The Hague. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, the in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands. And... Um, He's currently, like, like I said, a photographer, and a, he learned that at a very young age that he won, he won a photo contest that uh, really inspired you to, otherwise you were going down the, the uh, pathway of becoming an actor, right? Um, <laughs> which I can see that as well. Um, but you, were, you won the contest, you said, okay, you know, this is, is, sounds good, and you started following it. And after that, you went on to win many other photo contests. And then eventually you went into, you traveled to Peru and you were there for uh, two and a half months working as a volunteer and you did some photography work there, which sounds very interesting. We could talk about that in a little bit. Um, but that's where you really fell in love with the landscape and the people and um, you had your first exhibit correct? Uh, it was based around your adventures there. And um, then you went on to go to the School of Photography in Rotterdam. And uh, then you became an intern to some famous Dutch photographers and all of those type of things that, you know, you go through in, in our world. It's not easy to uh, become an intern for um, people who are already, you know, really practically in the, in the system. So that was more encouragement for you, more inspiration for you. And you just ran with it. And you be, at the same time um, of all the different things and projects that you've been doing, uh, you started to uh, just fall in love with nature, become like a, a huge nature lover. lover. And um, a lot of your uh, phot photography that we'll be looking at today is of forest, of course, uh, but also of water and movement and just the nature of of all of our planet, it really does speak to that. As um, as we we look into it, you'll see more. And you you did some you did talk about some interesting work you do with insects, which um, I do, we don't have any of those photographs today. But um, I just think that's like for me, that's one of the things that I love looking really really closely at the tiny tiniest things on our planet, the tiniest nature. Uh, piece of nature like the the, the cellular level so it, it does intrigue me you know and I actually don't mind insects I I kind of like them um, so that may not be true for everybody but um, it's interesting to me go ahead yeah they're not bugging you they're not bugging me <laughs> and this is something that we're gonna definitely see about milan has got a great sense of humor and really enjoy it yeah as soon as i'm done dribbling on here then we'll we'll get to the fun pieces <laughs> um let's see what else do i want to so forest and underwater okay and um we're going to talk about a lot about different things that you do uh, one of the things that uh, I first want to ask you, of course, is what brought you to Tree Sisters? 
it's a very good question. Um, and I will <laughs> tree brother. To... What brings a tree brother to tree sisters? Well, the trees. Mm -hmm. And um, I got in touch with you uh, via my mother, and she um, said, "Well, you know, this this could be a perfect fit for you because uh, you love uh, nature and you're a spiritual uh, kind of person. So see what it brings you, and if it's not for you, then at least you try." Mm -hmm. Yeah, then I uh, decided to uh, start donating um, a whole year and uh, I raised, I think, eight, over 800 uh, trees. Um, Yay, so that, that was thank nice. you. Yeah, that was uh, perfect. Now, at, at the moment, um, I started uh, another campaign to grow my own forest. Uh, it's called Influencer Forest because uh, if it's okay to segue into this, of course. Right, no, it's perfect. I was going to do that anyway. So just take, take the show. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the thing is, influencer for us, I, I thought about it because um, a lot of social media influencers, they uh, have their own uh, just causes that they donate to, of course. Uh, but um, they still travel a lot. Well, not this year, probably. <laughs> Um, but in, in generally speaking, they tend to go to the best uh, locations in the world, but yeah, they go by plane, obviously. Um, so I decided to uh, give them um, a chance to donate and then they can have their own uh, piece of uh, forest. And um, that's uh, to compensate the pollution that mm -hmm. they have. Uh, when they fly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, I started uh, contacting all uh, influencers on social media. Of course, uh, they're uh, hard to reach. So I have to go through management. And, uh, but I, I managed to contact a few directly and I spoke to them and they said, I, I really love your idea, but uh, I'm already engaged in something else at the moment. So. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the future, I, I would definitely keep it in mind. So that's, uh, that's positive. And uh, of course, um, I, I've been thinking lately, um, should it only be for um, influencers for, uh, on social media channels, or should it also be for people who just who care? Um, and uh, uh, yeah, convey the same message that, uh, that I'm uh, trying to do. So uh, I haven't uh, laid that egg yet. <laughs> I'm, st I'm still debating uh, whether I, I should uh, turn it open for more, uh, right. stuff, perhaps, or more people in general. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great idea. That was uh, one of the um, really inspiring ideas. I, the energy that you had around it, I think, was uh, the most inspiring thing that I thought, you know, that it really meant it was important to you. Yeah. You know, um, because you have been traveling, doing your photography work. And I, you know, I didn't mention that, you know, you actually were photographing, moved into doing photography for hotels and very expensive homes. And, and so that brought you all over the world. And you thought, hey, you know, this, this is burning a lot of uh, fuel. And you, that's another reason why you're, you know, you agree yeah, with your mom for Tree Sisters. Well, I was like, you're sitting in the plane and I came up with the idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Compensate is. yeah, yeah. And that's where the, you know, the guilt is, is sunken in for real. Like you're right there. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I think that, you know, timing is everything for people. And obviously, you know, it was, it was actually very nice that, the planes got a chance to stop and our our sky got a chance to clear and i know that the smog is clear they've tested it you know there's been uh, um it doesn't again. take long yeah it's coming back again um it because it can happen both ways so quickly and you know it would just be all the all the animals are coming out and they're like wow you know it and the trees start some of the trees started growing uh, faster even um COVID is, uh, it might not be successful for humanity, but it definitely is for nature. Yeah, it definitely uh, is for nature. It's a breather. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's something that is needed for us, for humanity. You know, it, it's so. Yeah, it's so tied together. I mean, we, we. I think what you, you know, when you say that, it, it, it's what not what we're used to, but actually what is actually better for us may not be is not what we've been doing and i know a lot of people have been talking about how nature saved them really you know to be able to go out into nature and to really feel the connection there is you know creates the same chemical reaction as it is to be close to people and you know we've forgotten that and um you know, I don't think we really put enough weight on it, right? You know, um, but yeah. So I'm so excited, I you know, about this influencer for us, and we're going to put a link to it uh, so that everybody can join. And you can join whether you fly a lot or a little, you know. But I I do love the idea that it's um, that it is about flying, and you know, specifically, you know, um, there's a lot of traveling that used to go on, and it will again. I'm sure. Just you know, everybody will probably want to fly even more now because they they might not you know think that they can fly for a while again um yeah yeah, those things happen but it's kind of good that you know a lot of it's very good i think that a lot of businesses have realized they can do a lot of work from in home you know and and, a lot of commuting mm -hmm, save a lot of community and i know that a lot of those companies will never go back to doing as much as they used to starbucks announced it also and i think Mm -hmm. apple is following yeah, and I think Microsoft too. The, the, the message I think from uh, from COVID is uh, get grounded. Get grounded. <laughs> can you explain that? <laughs> get grounded. Well, you can. Uh, oh, see. get grounded. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. I thought you said get grounded at first. Oh so. no, 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 no. No, no. Gra- grounded makes grounded. all. Yeah, that's perfect, and that's that was needed you know and i think that i just really hope you know like i'm sure you do and i'm sure many people do that these messages of getting grounded and the you know that that earth is needs to be protected and that we are valuable to ourselves and to each other and to save our health that those messages stay with us that they don't just fall into the background again and i don't think there's any way that it can you know there's been well, so many things going on airline companies uh, yeah if, if they stay grounded then uh, they yeah. might not uh, see the end of the year right right i know yeah the, there's a, there's an upside and a downside to everything that's for sure you know but well, there's no <clears throat> there's no other planet to fall back on and so um, at least at least yeah earlier we were talking about you know um working from space and doing all these things you know but right now (laughs) and it would be such a an absolute you know um it, it just to me it just this can't happen you know that we cannot just destroy this planet and just think that nothing is going to be left for our future for the you know for the children to come and the ones that are speaking up right now like right there in our faces i mean you're young too but there's like 12 and 13 year olds coming up and saying stop (laughs) uh, that's the future Mm -hmm. they uh, they opened up eyes early so that's good yeah yeah yesterday uh, i actually uh, about the future of our, um oceans also mm-hmm. yesterday I, I noticed an article online and it uh, was about 200 uh, fishing vessels from china they are at the border of the protected area in the galapagos now so they're just fishing everything clean it's uh mm-hmm. really it just makes me sad to be a human uh, sometimes. I know, doesn't it though? I yeah. mean, and and the choices that are being made are not the choices that that y- you would make unless you're just completely selfish and just you know, <laughs> you're only looking at the money and a lot of the things I, I, that I, are I, happening. I'm a petition and I, and I donated uh, what I could miss. Yeah. Uh, but um, you know, I, I saw that over fifty thousand people already signed the petition. So good good yeah there's definitely hope and i think you know that 
right now is the time when people are really starting to look a little bit closer at so many like you know catastrophic destructive behaviors that we've all been doing you know from so you know our social justice system to our health system to our environmental system really pretty much every sector is being like oh wow you know that you can't deny it anymore and it's all about control and dominance and money and and those are not obviously the the things that most of us truly you know believe is what we treasure we treasure each other we treasure our health we we treasure the beauty of a tree we we treasure the water i mean water is life it's we are water you know i mean and trees are full of water and, and trees create the the ecosystems that creates the water and you know oh circle of life it's this circle of life. Yeah, I'm gonna start singing. You write a song about it. <laughs> yeah, and then we can make a movie. What should we call it? Um, oh, li- something with lions. Yeah, definitely. They're the king of the jungle. <laughs> yeah, we need a we need a, a queen of the jungle. That's oh, yeah. what. <laughs> Um, um, the other thing I want to talk to you about is that you know your involvement with Tree Sisters, and uh, you've also um as a tree brother you know <laughs> come into courage to shine um the uh the course that we just completed and uh you were one of four tree brothers that were that joined i think it, there may even be more but um at least four um who came through the whole courage to shine with over about you know almost 600 um tree sisters and, and tree brothers, but all coming in to, to find that place in ourselves that really, um, you know, brings, calls forth our own personal leadership and our, our, our own agency. And Claire does an amazing, um, amazing job of bringing, bringing us through that journey uh, through the, uh, courage to shine. So I'd love to hear from you and have you share with everybody what, you know, what a personal experience that it was for you to come through that that journey. Yeah, uh, I would love to. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, letting me participate. That's uh, it was needed, uh, and also I, I, um, my mother pointed it out again, of course. Uh, that the, she says she's the rape pretender. Um, and I mentioned her name, Angelique. Yeah, Angelique Boas. Now I'm going to say it in the in the comments um, from this video, but I wanted to say her name. <laughs> she's one of uh, our precious river tender volunteers, and just an extraordinary woman. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, I, I contacted you to see um, what uh, what was what exactly, and if I could still join. And uh, well, I, I'm, I was glad that I could, uh, and mm-hmm. also the way I did it uh, was uh, I'm th- very thankful. And Claire has a very soothing voice to listen to. Mm-hmm. She's uh, very articulate uh, and very. Well, how do you say that? Uh, soothing. Soothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, the the course they uh, uh, well it really opened some doors for me, um, and I unblocked some dams that were in my uh, river, <laughs> so I could uh, flow more. And uh, actually, the 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 biggest uh, trigger for me. Uh, during the course was uh, that I found that my creativity was um, put in the shadow um, by me and uh, I needed to acknowledge that and put it into the light and um, let it shine. Uh, It it, it takes some courage to to do that Uh, but yeah it's uh, everybody um, has his own Things that they put in the shadows, of course, uh, it's very personal, and you really go in deep to work on it. 
um, through guided meditation um, and also journaling that was new for me actually um, oh. I, I don't journal I don't write I also typed it on my computer uh, so <laughs> it just felt more natural for me yeah um, but, uh, the handling uh, it, uh, it got to tricky on my laptop yeah yeah but uh, anyway that, that, that's on the side uh, yeah and yeah the, um, the creativity part uh, I'm still uh, rediscovering as we speak um, it's uh, something that um, that I yeah I, I think uh, I missed for a while and uh, I, I think it's good that it comes about uh, uh, to shine yeah um, on everything yeah well you know i agree with that and you know i feel that the creativity is is a voice all of it you know it's got an energy all, all of its own something that has to be brought forth and i'm just so glad that it's been you know um, unleashing you through courage, courage to shine through your own heart and like you say you know courage and and it not, does, not I mean, <laughs> what? Not the liquid kind. Not the liquid kind, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, the river is liquid, so. That's true, that's true. <laughs> but, you know, the, the courage that you talk about is, um, I think I love hearing that more and more about the courage uh, from you as a, as a tree brother, actually, mm -hmm. just to, because, you know, aren't you just always, having a lot of courage because you're a man, right? Well, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a human being, so uh, yeah. there's, uh, there's doubts and um, the courage to uh, not give in to those doubts uh, is something that I uh, sometimes do. Uh, but yeah, uh, of course, it uh, can get the better of you, and then uh, you're right back to start. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm. I'm good in, in seeing every uh, issue uh, in my life from a different angle, different point of view, mm -hmm. um, because I think it's necessary that. Uh, maybe through meditation for people or whatever that uh, helps you uh, get to the um to, to see the situation as it is like yeah. claire also uh, explained uh, the story uh, without the drama mm, yeah uh, just to being observing yeah mm -hmm. and that, that that really helps uh, you uh, be more open to change because yeah. uh, if you are stuck in a rut, uh, for instance, in a relationship or uh, in, uh, yeah, basically everything in life is a relationship. That's <laughs> very true. That's very true. Yeah. Um, and uh, then, then you can just see what, what you need to mm -hmm. do in order to change the situation. Yeah, looking uh, at it without the drama. Yeah. To just be observing the, the actual story. Yeah. yeah. And that's something that, uh, that really taught me uh, a lot um, during the course of the Courage to Shine. Yeah, it's very, it's very wise to come away with that. And, and you know, and I, when I, I say that about, you know, being a man, I think it also relates to being a woman, you know, where we, uh, have been taught to sort of pretend that we've got this, you know, that we, everything is fine, we're doing well, you know, we're strong, we're, and, you know, we cover up a lot of the things that really will help us find the true courage, like, and so to be able to own it, you know, for me, uh, I kind of call, like, we, you know, Claire talks about like revealing, you know, being more revealing. I've always thought of it as be exposing my truths, you know, and it can be very difficult <laughs> to very do. Vulnerable. Very vulnerable is hard, you know, and I think, you know, women, it's hard for women, but it may even be more difficult for men to show that they're vulnerable because, you know, that place of 
being in control and, you know, uh, being the one that is supposed to protect everybody, you know, like the whole, there's a stigma, you know. There, there, there definitely is a stigma, but I think um, it doesn't matter the gender, it's, uh, it matters the upbringing from your parents. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah. How they teach you to deal with emotion. Mm. And so that can be for male or female, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's classic. And you had Angelique. And my dad. And your dad, of course. Don't leave him out. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that right there, whatever that the chemistry was of both of them, you know, to create um, a child, children that are open to sharing their feelings and they grow from doing that is is what the world needs more of Milan so um, in your creativity and you know I think in your presence really you know when I was saying how I could see that actor I didn't mean that you acted like but I think you're very real and I think that your presence though is you know there's a um, something uh, that, it, that calls you in when you're when you're talking so no matter what you do from here going forward whether it be your photography or if you just completely you know get it going to a different form of creativity of showing your expression maybe, that maybe it goes uh, sideways <laughs> it, it probably will be knowing you um that you know whatever way it is that it's going to make a difference in the world to others to people who maybe don't have uh you know the gift of parents that that you have and uh to the children and the young men and, and the young women and oh you know everyone uh humanity it, itself to just become more honest and open and owning uh you know the truth and and that's going to make all the difference. You know, I know that. And I know things have been, we're going to get into looking at some of your photography now. I know that things have been difficult with COVID for a lot of people, um, you know, to do work. But for you, that it, it, it's like you can't travel, you can't go, you can't do the photography. And so I know things have shifted for you for that one of those reasons. Um, but I wanted to, to everyone to see the work that you had done um, prior. And then for all of us to just set the sights on what, what's possible for you now. And, and uh, just knowing, you can tell that, there's, that you're, you're on the right track, you're moving in the right direction, and the courage to shine was there to be supportive in whatever way, but it's you that you're listening to your spirit. So, it, obviously, this is uh, in America, in the U.S., so if you could just tell us a little bit about um, how you felt while you were doing these and, and what it was. We yeah. were uh, traveling to Hawaii, and uh, we had a layover in San Francisco, and on the way to Hawaii and from the way, uh, on the way back. Uh, and on the way back, we decided uh, to um, go to uh, Yosemite and uh, see the beautiful sequoias also. And yeah, it, did, yeah, it was just magical, overwhelming a little. Um, they're they're huge. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're the gentle giants uh, of the trees, and um, they uh, yeah. They just have a lot of power um, and uh, beauty. Just, just beauty. The trunks are are immense. Uh, it's it's really something out of this world almost. Mm -hmm. And how do you connect to nature and the landscapes when you're when you're in these areas and you're photographing? Um, you you talked a little bit about this earlier about you know, looking for your muse and being with your muse there? Yeah, um, well, to connect is just um, to be, basically. Uh, it's, um, I, yeah, I just start walking and uh, when I don't think about 
my shots or uh, what what I shoot basically. I, of course, I, I register it and I, I click, but uh, it's impulsive, um, and that that's what I try to do with um, my uh, own photography. Also, um, I what basically when you're in the flow in in, in the zone. You just ride the wave, uh, and it makes you um, not think about um, what to do, basically. But um, how it, it makes you react to the moment. The moment. Uh, and of course, you can change some details about it uh, if you have a model shoot or whatever. Um, but yeah, the to be observing. Um, the moment and to, to be one with nature or uh, whatever I'm shooting is um, uh, yeah just creates a very calm feeling and uh, makes me want to click more <laughs> yeah and it, and it, you show, you know, we're looking at forests, but you're, this happens for you in all of nature's landscapes. Oh yeah, basically uh, in in every every aspect uh, that I uh, I photograph. Yeah, that's uh, I was actually on my um, trip in Peru. I. Uh, uh, decided to uh, walk to uh, Machu Picchu, the, the Inca Trail, it's called, and it's a four-day walk. And uh, the guy you see in the picture, he's uh, a porter, so you, you can give him a backpack or uh, he, he uh, carries stuff for the tent uh, camp. And it's. Um, yeah, he was just walking so fast. And this is actually almost at the highest point of the of the journey. Um, uh -huh. It's uh, it, it was beautiful. I, I you know I I just had a small pocket camera with me, and it's, mm -hmm. uh, I I just again I just clicked because I felt I had to. Yeah, um, it looks like you're walking directly into the clouds. No, yeah. yeah. But actually, yeah. there's a path, and it goes to the left. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just, just clear. Talk about this one. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, um, thank it you. It was uh, a present from my uh, uh, oh, ex-girlfriend now. Um, and uh, she, she gave me a present to swim with whales in uh, French Polynesia. Mm. And it was... Uh, we did it actually twice because the first uh, tour that we did there was uh, not much sightings but uh, just very far away and you could just make out the the white of the thing and um, then the second tour we did was uh, at the end and uh, we were going back already and I told the, the guide look maybe there uh, I saw something and we just came from there the direction but I see something moving above water. Uh, and he said, yeah, I think I see it too. Let's go back. So we went back and uh, we saw a calf and the mother uh, lying on the back, making these splashes with her uh, fin, uh, with her tail fin. And it was just amazing. Uh, and the calf was mimicking the mother um, and, and turned around to the, the belly and then the same thing it wasn't was it was amazing to, to just be on the boat and see that and then the guy said okay very very gently we go into the water <laughs> and i was like yes <laughs> yes <laughs> everybody on the boat was yes so, and it, uh, fortunately for us it was a small group maybe like uh, four uh, i think max six people and um, the moment I went after, and I went after the guide, and I, I let myself into the water, and I looked down, and there was this huge whale, the mother, who was just swimming underneath me, 
just minding our own business. It was <laughs> so overwhelming. Uh, yeah. And then I looked left and I saw the calf. <laughs> also, just minding his own business, swimming past me. Uh... That's intense. Uh, and my, my heart uh, skipped a beat. Yeah. Uh, out of pure joy. And then uh, I had this, uh, I, I decided to bring my phone in, in, the, uh, in the, on the water bag uh, with will sounds. Uh, I thought, well, maybe I can communicate with them, you know, and see, <laughs> I can say hi. Uh, but um, of course, uh, some water got into the bag and my phone uh, didn't um. make it in the end. Uh, well, it did, we put it on rice. But uh, that, that, that moment that I had to swim back um, to bring my camera uh, and my phone to the, to the boat, uh, the group had a close encounter with uh, the calf because he came up for air and he just floated towards them and just hovered mm. in front of them. And Wonderful. Bit, and I was like, oh shit, I missed that. Yeah, yeah, you're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's my birthday. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, then um, I went swimming back, and you know, it's open sea, so you cannot swim very fast, but you have, you have things. But then uh, I was on the side of the group, uh, separated from them by, uh, yeah, by quite some distance. And um, I felt alone, which was perfectly fine. And then the calf, he came up for air again, but uh, he came close to me. Um. And that, that was cool, uh, you know. And then the mother, she came up for air, mm. very close to me. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. Oh, wow. What and then I, I just would look into her eye and it was uh, yeah. Amazing. That's really what I hear. But looking into a whale's eye, I've heard yeah. that from a lot of people. It's intense. What an amazing adventure that is. Uh -huh, definitely. And I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful uh, that I had the opportunity to go there. Yeah. And, uh, that was my birthday present. Yeah. Uh, it's one in a million that, you know, and the, the timing for them to to know that about you and to... Yeah, because, yeah, the, and the the whales actually it was the end of the whale season, so most of them have migrated already. Wow! Uh, so it was unusual timing for. Yeah, the, 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 there were only maybe three mothers left with a calf. And wow! Yeah, we had, we just had luck. Such a blessing! Yeah, it's it's so beautiful and beautiful beautiful photography of course you know with the well, the adventure the story that you can tell with your creativity is really heart capturing these are um some some things that you did some foot photography that shoots that you did on the beach yeah. right yeah it's um the dancer uh, you see it now in front of you uh, the yeah black dress and um, it's a project uh, that I came on board with a girlfriend of mine. And uh, the dancer uh, that you see, it's, uh, it's his uh, baby, the, the project. He thought about it and, uh, and it's a crowdfunding project at the moment. But um, it's about decolonization, um, the rituals that you have with that. And, it's it's very powerful stuff uh, and he, he really was in a trance dancing and, but, but the thing i i love dance photography um i uh i really it, it's something that that makes me happy yeah to do and uh well i don't know if you can say that but uh i from yourself of course but that i have a good timing um because maybe that's because i don't maybe think about uh when to click i just feel that i have to click so yeah. maybe that's um part of the good time <laughs> yeah oh definitely you know you're listening yes you're, yeah. lis you're listening and you know like this this really feels it's so interesting i could just look at this 
for a long time, it, you know, uh, the lighting, the way that it, the captured, you know, the, the sand and his neck, the extension, everything. I mean, of course, you know, the dance is, is hard to catch. I, I think hard to capture um, the well, right, the move, right movements. Yeah. yeah. The, the movement uh, makes it tricky, but uh, that's, that's a challenge. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's yeah it's just something that makes me happy and want to do more and, and i i'm started thinking about uh, a project of my own now actually uh just the past few days and uh, talking about the creativity <laughs> um and uh it's um uh, i want maybe shoot in the dunes because this was on the beach. Yeah, the and, sand, yeah. And, yeah, and in, in the dunes, it's a little bit different kind of sand, uh, a bit more white, and there's of course, uh, so that, that might be a different uh, uh, perspective. Yeah, well, it's all of the landscapes. You have to look at uh, Mary Thompson Reynolds' work, and she talks about all of the l different landscapes and what they mean. You know, there could be a, a really deep connection for you because it seems like you're drawn throughout. Um, but the, can you see the one on my screen right now? Yes. Yes. Okay. That, that, um, that was when um, I was in Israel for uh, two months also. Uh, my uh, ex-girlfriend, uh, uh, from that time, she uh, uh, is Israeli, and she went back uh, to study um, for a test that she had to do, and I, I followed um, and I uh, contacted the two best uh, theater photographers from Israel, and both of them uh, replied and were willing to uh, connect with me. Uh, so I um, had, had the pleasure of meeting them and talk about the work. And um, this uh, image was taken, uh, in the, the company is called the Kibbutzim Contemporary Dance Company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, of KCDC, I think it's uh, for sure, it's better. Uh, but uh, the, yeah, the, the photographer uh, took me to a rehearsal and said, okay, yeah, you can shoot with the camera there and uh, I will do the other angle. And um, that was very, very nice. Um, I, I still love this picture. It looked like an ear also with uh, mm -hmm. the sand. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I, I, I love it. Yeah, it's a really spectacular picture that you captured that moment and you know, it feels to me, I can see the ear, I didn't think of that, but yeah, it, it, it's like listening, yeah. And but I, I, when I first looked at it, I saw the wave and, you know, sort of going into the creative flow is what I, what I felt. I love the, the goldenness of the, of the yeah. sand Beautiful. and, and the, you know, barely, barely recognizable, um, women and, and people in the background there i just the whole thing is is um mysteriously magic there's something very very potent about it and yeah it's really amazing again with um mary reynolds uh mary reynolds thompson's work you know it's about the landscapes each of the landscapes and how they're all in each of us as well and I feel like that that picture really showed, you know, how he was he's dancing with the sand and um, really spectacular. Now here's some of the underwater ones that you've done. It can you yeah, see this? It's okay. The same uh, project as the dancer on the beach, mm -hmm. and um, it's going to be part of a short film. And a friend of mine, she's. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we're gonna do this. Would you like to be part of it as an assistant? I said, well, why not uh, be taking skills? Maybe it's a better fit. So, mm -hmm. uh, I got, the first time was on the beach. This was the second time. It was in a swimming pool, and um, that was was amazing. It 
was uh, very cold, <laughs> but uh, still very uh, intense. Yeah, yeah. I, I know there's a whole story to her experience with water and, you know, the, the, the shoot was actually part of her, you know, courage to shine in a way, wasn't Definitely. it? Definitely, yes, yes. She, she, after the shoot, she mentioned that she's afraid of water. Mm -hmm. Because she had a traumatic experience when she was young. So to overcome this in this way, it's very, yeah, deep respect for uh, what she did. Yes, definitely. We even open her eyes underwater, and you know how difficult it is uh, without a mask. Uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, deep respect for, for her to, to have overcome this fear. Because, uh, yeah, the fear is nothing else than uh, an emotion that you uh, are triggered by. Right. And uh, to, to, to face it. And, I really took my hand. <laughs> yeah, me too, me too. It, you know, I can, it waters one of, you know, people's um, most fears, you know, one of the things that people are most afraid of. I'm not, I love water, but I can understand it, that how it could be, because it's a completely different way of, you know, you're completely surrounded by it. It's not like you're, you have a choice and, um, just I can I can feel the intensity through these photographs and I think you know the the connection um, I'm gonna stop sharing again but I think the connection that you have with your subjects is is extraordinary um, and I think everybody probably feels that now through this this time with you yeah I mean so you know you're you're not even really talking about the light or the positioning or, you know, that's just sort of second nature to you, like you said, because you're listening. Okay. Yeah. But you're talking about the emotion behind um, the story of the, the photographs and um, what moves us, what moves us to look at them is what your experience is in that, if that makes sense. And um, uh, I really appreciate it. Is just, uh, it's literally writing with light. Yeah. Um, so if you can read the light, you can learn how to write. Uh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Did you just, did you just say, make that up? Because- uh, Well, is it, uh, I think photography is the definition of uh, yeah. writing with light. Writing with light. I love that. I love that. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Um, so we're on that subject. What do you What do you feel is the deepest purpose of your art? Uh, I know. I know. That's that's going to be a big one for you. But um, <laughs> um, well, the deepest purpose. Um, Yeah, the, the, I can only speak for myself, of course, because uh, you, you cannot say, yeah, my, my goal is to uh, make people think about my photography and really get them involved. And that, that, that's, not, that's not my goal. Um, my goal is to connect, I think, uh, more than uh, that. Uh, it's, um, yeah, to, to be able to it just for, for me to, if, if, if a picture is um, is a good picture yeah, what defies a good picture uh, and, that, and that's the feeling and uh, that you have with it and of course you can look at the technique being used the light uh, yeah that, that again like I said that that's secondary um, and of course everybody has their own opinion about mm -hmm. everything uh, about art about photography uh, it's really so yeah you, you you cannot i cannot really uh answer the question um maybe in the normal way 
Well, um, I think I, I think you did. Um, you know, for me, what I'm hearing is the purpose for you is to is to feel it and connect. And, yeah. and connect with it, and then put it out there, and that everyone else's job is to really do the same with that. But that's yeah. your purpose, yeah. And I I felt that, yeah. And I've and, and and it's you know it's undeniable. Like when we went through all of your work that the way that you spoke about it was through your connection to the place and to the person or the tree or, you know, your experience. And that, like you said, you can't set that up for anybody else, but, you know, I have to say that looking at your work, I do experience, I did exp have an experience of my own through your, what you experienced. So, um, you know, maybe you don't get to hear that, you know, from everyone of what their experiences are. And, but I think also that connection to our planet, you know, to the connection to earth is something that I think you're really bringing forward for everybody, whether or not they get the entire message that, you know, that you felt or you, ex or the experience of even the dancer or the, the woman in the water or the, the redwoods, what they experience, everybody's looking <laughs> you know or you're you're making us you're helping us to look and to notice and to see and especially when we can't fly everywhere we want to fly uh, you took us just in a little journey right here just around around the planet and um you know i think that it's it's a beautiful gift that you're that you're bringing so uh, we're almost gonna we're almost done and the last thing i want to do is to ask you what advice um would you give to anyone who um wants to you know feels that they they're not creative or they want to be more creative or even if they are creative if they want to find a purpose or or whatever that may be what what would be just from your experience uh, from Milan, what would you say? <laughs> the thing is, I'm still struggling my own uh, with this uh, question. Uh, um, yeah, it, a, a very long time uh, I have felt very uh, numb. Um, like, uh, you know, maybe uh, I, I, there, there couldn't be any project uh, everything was too much uh, and my work that I did it wasn't fulfilling and was just draining energy instead of giving me energy um, so yeah the, the only advice I can give to somebody who feels creative um, or wants to be creative uh, whether it's with uh, any form of art but for, I can only relate uh, now to photography, of course, um, is to um, seek inspiration uh, from other photographers that, uh, um, that you like. Um, and maybe try to first see if you can sort of copy the, the style uh, to be uh, able to, to do that, it, it's already very difficult. And from that, you can create your own style. Um, and uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be copying, of course. Uh, either way, it's good what you do uh, because it's it's going to be from you uh, as, uh, as uh, somebody who creates something. So, uh, yeah. But copying tends to be the easiest way to achieve um, something uh maybe we should uh well just look at um yeah L look at the inspiration sources and uh do it just do it uh, just, just do it yeah uh, <laughs> yeah i think we should make a commercial um that says just do it yeah this is a good slogan <laughs> Uh, well, uh, that's been really wonderful, and I think that your advice is um, really spot on in so many ways. Uh, you know, everybody, um, everything is copied. I mean, you know, John Lennon 
you know, um, one of my favorites that always said, you know, there's really nothing that can that hasn't been done. There isn't a song that hasn't been signed. There isn't a photograph that hasn't. Yeah. And, but you can it's, only do it way. Yeah, it's the way. And, you know, to find someone who inspires you in the genre that you would like to be in is is the way. I mean, you're mentoring with them. You yeah. know, it's um it's a gift, you know, to to them as well. Um uh, even if they don't know it and you know but that energy is supporting what how they saw like in your world with photography how they saw inside that viewfinder and um but the one thing that i really appreciate about how you began that answer was to say that you've had you're still struggling and yeah and um so i really appreciate your your honesty your openness your integrity, your uh, your authentic Milan, and um, really proud to um, to really to you know to say hey here's our our tree brother and yeah. you know here's our creative tree brother and I just I look forward to the journey that is yeah, unfolding. Too. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, uh, uh, if I can add something, uh, please for the advice. Uh, there's uh, um you need to struggle otherwise mm -hmm. you cannot uh, uh, find your way <laughs> yeah like push push yourself yeah, right you past your out of your comfort zone and mm -hmm. uh, yeah that's true that's also why i started um it helped me to push forward with the influencer forest project yeah uh, seek discomfort uh, guys on uh, uh, from the yes theory uh, and um, they that's their that's their that's their motto it's uh, seek discomfort it's, right. uh, they, you can find them on youtube uh, the yes theory it's amazing yeah 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 i've seen that and it, it's so true you know to to when you feel that edge it feels like you're being blocked because you feel like you can't go further but the block is actually the bridge and yeah. it's like okay the, you know it takes a little bit of effort to get over the bridge sometimes it's shaky and has holes and in missing boards and whatever but you know that's that's the the, the next step you know of growth it the courage to shine yeah. <laughs> Well, I think we'll leave it on those on those words. And somebody should invent a workshop called "The Courage to Shine." It would be a great plan. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about Claire uh, with uh, about that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'll let her, I'll let her know what your suggestion is. And thank you, Milan. Thank you very much for your time. It's amazing. <laughs>